Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about fossils. We're going to look at what fossils are, the conditions in which fossils occur, the formation of fossils, and the different types of fossils. So basically, a fossil is any evidence of past life. And what we mostly think about when we talk fossils is this dinosaur, the T-Rex, at the Natural History Museum. But there are different types of fossils. Not everything that dies is going to turn into a fossil. The conditions have to be fairly specific for that to occur. So to become a fossil, the body must be buried before fully decomposing. So, and this means that it has to be buried fairly quickly. And for that to happen, if tar, like the La Brea tar pits, uh, bog and mud are all great places for a body to be buried nice and quickly before decomposing. Once that has happened and it's been buried, it then needs to be covered in further sediments and buried into the ground further. If it gets uncovered or if it doesn't get buried quick enough, it's just going to be eaten or it's going to decompose. So that was not going to give us a good fossil. Once it's been buried, uh, water moving through the sediments brings with it minerals and they dissolve into the body and the sediments cement together. So this causes a sedimentary rock to form around the fossil and it causes what we refer to as mineralization of the fossil where the minerals from the rock form inside the gaps in the fossil. So it might be the little air pockets in the bone uh, that turn it into a fossil. Now the thing here is that a fossil is different to a bone in that the bones are generally very light because they have all these air pockets in them while fossils are very heavy and they're pretty much made of minerals because the minerals fill up all those air pockets. Then those remains need to stay intact until they are uncovered through erosion or excavation. So if the sediments get too deep on top and push that fossil down into the earth, it may get down as far as the intrusive rock uh, and cause that fossil to be lost. Uh, if it erodes too quickly, that fossil will then not be, uh, won't have mineralized quick enough. So it's got to stay in the ground for just the right amount of time and not too long. Now there's a few different types of fossils. The first type is actual remains, and this is where bodies are trapped in ice or in amber. So you can see here this uh, insect is trapped in amber, uh, and this mammoth is a, an example of one that, a baby mammoth that fell through the ice in Siberia and was frozen in time for us to find. So that's pretty cool. They can cause a mold, which is an imprint on the body, so from this imprint, a cast can be made. So a cast occurs when that mould fills up with minerals. So if it creates a mould, uh, washes whatever's inside it away as the water moves through it, uh, then other water comes in that's mineral rich and those minerals crystallise inside that mould, which will give us a cast fossil. A carbonized fossil occurs when an organism decomposes between the layers of rock and it leaves this sort of black outline, which occurs quite often with plants and with fish. Or it can be a trace, which is other evidence of an organism, for example, a footprint. Now you're probably thinking, why does that fossil look like a big poo? Well, that's because it is. Another trace is called coprolite, and it's basically fossilized feces. In this video, we've looked at fossils being any evidence of past life. We've looked at the conditions fossils occur in, being that they need to be buried nice and quickly before they decompose, the formation of fossils as the sediments pile on top of them, and the water brings the minerals in to replace the minerals that are in the bone, causing mineralization, and then the erosion or excavation, bringing those fossils to the surface. And we've talked about the different types of fossils being actual remains, mould, cast, carbonised fossils and trace fossils. Thanks for watching guys. Peace out.